Traditionally, the necklaces were short before the European, the European invasion, as they call it, or the colonists coming down to Tasmania. And they were short and they were only marinier shells, which is the actual shell for the indigenous Tasmanian. And they were the only shells that they ever strung, and they were strung in short necklaces. And in the book, in Lola's monograph, there's a photograph of Chuganini, and she has a number of short necklaces round her neck. Now, the reason that those necklaces were short was because they were more practical to wear, but also because they had, um, they used to use sinew to thread them on, and they used to use a, and you'll see it come up in the photographs here, they used to use a wallaby jaw that they would hone the tooth, and that was what they did. So it was a lot more time consuming to be able to um, make these necklaces. Once the colonists came, they brought cotton thread and they brought metal tools, which then, and they brought needles that then made threading the necklaces easy. The other thing was that the women very quickly discovered the longer the necklace, the more money they could get for it. But the problem that developed with that is that the marinere shells are so precious and, as Lola says, are deteriorating. They're, they're, they're just not going to eventually be here for a number of reasons, which I'll go into afterwards. They started combining other shells into the necklaces. And this is where you get the different groupings of shells in the necklace. That is only a, a contemporary um, manifestation of shell, collect, of shell stringing. So that was a way that they could stretch the marineers and then they could make shells that didn't have marineers and they'd still be able to sell their necklaces. In collecting the shells, they're very environmentally conscious and they only collect as much as they need to collect to get a body of work done. So, and if it's a bad year when they go to Flinders, they may come back with very little. And then what they'll do is share amongst themselves. Now with the contemporary works, which are the other things that are made from possum fur, which is miles of that around, and the scallop shells and those sort of things, now they're not traditions. There's no traditions in that. That's Lola's own work. And she's the only person down in Tasmania who I know at the moment is doing that type of work with those contemporary pieces there. And I think what Lola says and is trying to do is it's a way that she can see being aware and being mindful to protect the shell resources that are part of their customs and their tradition and their history by only making so many, but then making these other works 